Let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jesse. I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us for this webinar on exciting excursions aboard the Ocean Diamond. Um, take a second to jot down my information. So sorry, I'm going backwards in my PowerPoint. Um, it's just jesse at emergingdestinations.com. Um, if you would like a brochure or any, any digital information um, or would like a private webinar for you and your team, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to offer those not only for Iceland Pro Cruises, um, but any one of our other clients. So feel free to reach out to me for absolutely that you might need. Now, before I hand everything over to Enrique uh, with Iceland Pro Cruises, I just wanted to touch on our portfolio. So we not only have the pleasure of representing Iceland Pro Cruises and Iceland Pro Travel in Iceland and Greenland, but we have a really great South America portfolio with Terra Nova being in Costa Rica, Guyana Tourism Authority in Guyana, Hotel Las Torres and Fantastico Sur in Hotel or in Torres del Paine National Park. Cruz Andino does the famous lake crossing in Patagonia uh, in the Andes Mountains, and then Jungle Experiences cruises the Peruvian Amazon. Then lastly, we have Grand Hotels Lux in Argentina and Uruguay. We also have an African portfolio that consists of Kelly and Peacock Safaris, the Elowana Collection, and Sky Safari. All three of those are in Kenya and Tanzania. Then we also have eco training um, in South Africa. Lastly, we have Adventure Consults in Uganda and Rwanda. So if you're interested in any of these companies that you're seeing on this page, head over to the Emerging Destinations homepage. Under the webinar tab, you can find webinars on all of these clients. Um, so we're trying to give you up-to-date information and useful information as your guests are reaching back out to you and wanting to travel. So we're more than happy to um, deep dive these privately if you'd like. So today uh, we're going to be covering exciting excursions aboard the ocean and if any of you are joining us for the second time you uh, learned about Enrique just introducing us to the destination of Iceland and Greenland if you missed that one don't worry I'll send it up I'll send it in the follow-up email that I send you today but Unfortunately, Iceland Pro Cruises had to cancel its 2020 season, so um, we are preparing for 2021 and really, really excited to welcome your guests aboard the Ocean Diamond. Um, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so if you need to step out or if you joined late, don't worry. Um, you will be receiving the recording. Um, I'll try and get that out by next week. Also, please feel free to type in questions on the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, as Enrique is presenting, I am happy to um, get to those questions at the end of the webinar. So please be sure to type those through. But without further ado, I'm going to hand everything over to Enrique, who is taking us on board the Ocean Diamond and the cool excursion that your guests can expect. Thank you, Jesse, and uh, welcome to our second webinar on Iceland and Greenland. For those who missed part one, my name is Henrike and I'm working at the Iceland Pro Cruises sales office in Hamburg. Last time we talked about Iceland and Greenland as travel destinations in general, and I introduced the Ocean Diamond, the expedition ship we use to cruise around Iceland and to go to Greenland. Today we are going to look into these cruises in more detail and especially into the shore excursions. As you learned last time, unfortunately, we had to cancel our 2020 season. So we are going to look into our 2021 cruises and I will give you heaps of reasons why Iceland and Greenland should be first on your client's list to travel when everything goes back to normal. Our main product is our 10 day Iceland circumnavigation. All our cruises start and end in Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. We visit 10 harbors in 10 days, which means no day at sea. The ship usually docks at the pier from morning to evening, which gives your guests enough time to explore the surroundings on their own or go on one of the offered shore excursions. During these cruises, we try to bring the spirit of Iceland on board. Our expedition members are uh, mostly locals who speak, of course, English, and we have Icelandic food and entertainment on board. 
We call our product a soft expedition because it's a mix of a classical cruise and an expedition cruise. The atmosphere on board is very casual and personal with only around 200 passengers per cruise. During our shoulder season, which means May and September for us, we offer a shortened version of the Iceland circumnavigation called Best of Iceland. This cruise takes only eight days and we visit eight harbors during the cruise. Always included in the cruise price is, of course, the accommodation in the booked cabin category, all meals on board, coffee, tea and water, zodiac excursions, English speaking guides, onboard entertainment like presentations and lectures, and an Iceland Pro Cruises jacket. As just mentioned, uh, zodiac excursions are always included in the cruise price. So, for those who don't know, zodiacs are the rubber boats that you can use in the picture. And uh, we are using them for shorter tours to explore the surroundings, for example, going uh, bird watching. And in Greenland, they are also used to get ashore. Coming to our optional shore excursions, we offer a wide range of shore excursions that can be booked either in advance or on board. We try to offer at least three excursions in every harbor, and we try to have a mix of more active tours like hiking or kayaking, and for example, bus tours for those who can't or don't want to walk longer distances. I'm going to present to you a selection of shore excursions in each harbor we are going to visit on our 10-day Iceland circumnavigation. Our first harbor on the Iceland circumnavigation is Stukkisoma on the Sneifelsnes Peninsula. On this shore excursion onto the top of the Sneifels Jokku glacier, an experienced guide will drive the guests by snowcat up the glacier. In good weather conditions, guests can enjoy a fantastic view over the Sneifelsnes Peninsula. And on especially clear days, they can even spot the far off west fjords. Another popular excursion in this harbor is the seafood tastings. Guests will experience the traditional Icelandic tra trapping method of, for example, mussels, scallops, shrimps, or sea stars, and afterwards enjoying a delicious tasting of this Viking-style sushi. They will be cruising past picturesque and fairy tale-like landscapes and will get the opportunity to spot birds that nest on the terrific rock formations off the coast. Our next stop on this cruise is Isafjordur. On the excursion called It's a Viking Thing, guests will take a journey to another place in time. They will learn about traditions of the Vikings that still echo in the lives of the locals. The tour starts with a drive to the village of Fingeri, often called the Viking Village. Here guests can see the ruins of the old Viking Thing, the parliament of the Viking period, and visit the Viking Center. They even get the opportunity to dressing up in authentic handmade Viking clothing, bake Viking bread on an open fire and cheer with a Viking beer. Another popular tour is the bus tour to Dinyandi waterfall. The magnificent waterfall is the highest and most impressive in the West Fort region. Other highlights on this tour are the breathtaking rough nature, high summits and beautiful deep fjords of this region. From here, we continue our journey to the harbor of Siglufjordur. Guests will dive into the golden age of the herring boom at the award-winning Herring Museum. The highlight is a live herring salted demonstration with traditional songs and dances performed by the local herring girls. On the small island of Rise, we will make a half day stop. It is believed that up to 40 bird species nest on the island. The main reason for this unusually large concentration of birds is that all hunting of birds and gathering of eggs is banned on the island. And there are no natural predators such as foxes, minks, mice or rats. Guests can visit the oldest house of Rise, the house of Shark Rorundur, 
where they will find an expedition about the history of the island and the history of shark fishing in Iceland in early centuries. On our way around Iceland, we visit Akureyri. It's the second biggest town in Iceland. On a bus tour, guests will enjoy one of the most beautiful areas of northern Iceland, which is the area around Lake Mývatn. Highlights on this tour are impressive black lava formations, the spectacular Skudafoss waterfall, and the soothing bars at Mývatn Nature Bath. Another highlight is the kayaking excursion. Guests will enjoy the silence and the beautiful views while sliding through the impressive fjord landscape. They might even spot whales. The tour ends with some time to relax in the geothermal hot pot at the beach with beautiful views over the fjord and the mountains. The next stop on our tour is Husavik, Europe's whale watching capital. On the whale watching tour, guests will get the opportunity to spot puffins and whales. The chances for spotting whales are at over 99% here. A bus tour brings guests to Europe's most powerful waterfall. It's named Detifos. A mass of water, mud and sand rumbles into Iceland's most impressive canyon. First stop in the east of Iceland is Seytisfjöru. One of the most popular tours of the whole cruise is horseback riding. The history of the Icelandic horse reaches back in the 9th and 10th centuries. Nowadays, there are approximately 65,000 Icelandic horses in Iceland. The two hour tour offers a wonderful way to appreciate the beauty of the coast and nearby mountains, as well as endless opportunities of spotting birds and seals. Another highlight is a visit to Skaulanes Nature Reserve. This tour is a unique opportunity to visit one of Iceland's most remote places that even few Icelanders have witnessed. The center aims to create a site where Icelandic environment and culture history can be researched and experienced whilst maintaining a model for sustainable tourism. The area is a habitat for approximately 50 different bird species during the summertime, and guests will enjoy some local refreshments at Skalanes House. Our next stop is Djupivogur. One highlight is, of course, the Super Jeep Tour. Guests can enjoy a Super Jeep drive to the hidden gems of nature that can be discovered in the national park Vatnajökull. They will not only cross glacier rivers, but drive through spectacular mountain scenery and visit canyons and waterfalls. A bus tour brings the guests to the most famous site at the south coast, the Glacier Lagoon and Diamond Beach. Huge blocks of ice constantly break off the glacier and large icebergs float on the lagoon. Guests will sail along the huge icebergs with a specially equipped boat. The last harbour on our round trip are the Westman Island or Westmanaeja in Icelandic. In 1973, what seemed to be the impossible happened, a volcanic eruption started on the Westman Islands. The locals were saved and shipped away, but the eruption lasted months, covering half of the town in rocks and lava. The bus tour Pompeii of the North brings the guests around Haimei Island and to the volcanic crater and half-buried houses. The tour ends at the Volcanic Center, a unique museum that tells the story of the eruption and the geology of the Westman Islands. Another option is a one-hour guided quad tour that will give guests the opportunity to ride through stunning lava fields while experiencing the real off-road feeling. This was the last stop on our Iceland circumnavigation, so now we will move on to Greenland. We offer two cruises that combine Iceland and Greenland. The main focus is on Greenland, Iceland is only the starting or ending point for these cruises. The 12-day cruise visits eight harbor and various sites along the east and west coast of Greenland. 
We bring experts and locals on board and offer a wide range of shore excursions. To save some time or to give our guests more time in Greenland, the departure back to Iceland will be via charter flight. Our new destination in 2021 is a visit to East Greenland. It is one of the most isolated areas in the world. To the west, the massive central ice cap rises 8,000 feet. To the east is the open ocean with drifting sea ice from the North Pole. This seclusion is the reason why traditions and culture run deeper here than anywhere else in Greenland. Untouched nature with huge fjords and mighty icebergs dominate the landscape. In East Grand Greenland, we will only offer zodiac excursions, so they are included in the price. Arriving at the southern tip of Greenland's west coast, we visit Nasasuak. One of the highlights is the small settlement of Kassiasuk. The settlement is housing some of the most interesting ruins from the Viking period and reconstructions will be open to visit. In Kassiasuk, it is possible to visit the ruins of the first Christian church in Greenland, as this was the site where the first Viking, Eric the Red, visiting Greenland settled. Another highlight is a helicopter flight to the Ikalit Glacier. During this flight seeing tour, the helicopter flies at low altitude over the coastal mountains before landing in front of the glacier. Guests will get some time to inspect and photograph the amazing glacier fairs before flying back. Next stop is Nuuk, the capital of Greenland and its oldest town. Founded in 1728 by Danish-Norwegian missionary Hans Egede. With around 16,000 inhabitants, Nuuk is considered a bustling metropolis compared to the rest of Greenland's cities and settlements. A guided tour brings the guests to the old city center, a local market, and the National Museum of Greenland. Next stop on our cruise along the coast is Sisimiut. With approximately 5,600 inhabitants, Sisimiut is the second largest town in Greenland. The natural harbor remains ice-free throughout the year, which made it an attractive location for European whalers in former times. Guests can participate in a guided hike and visit the first settlements in Greenland that date back 4,000 years. The next day we reach Ilulisat village in fabled Disco Bay. Ilulisat is located close to the ice fjord. Ilulisat means iceberg in Greenlandic and the Ilulilas, Ilulisat ice fjord is impressive whether viewed from the air or from the sea. Guests can experience an unforgettable cruise to the mouth of the Ilulisat ice fjord, where an underwater moraine catches many of the large icebergs. The only way to cross the moraine is via pressure from behind. Therefore, you always see a multitude of huge icebergs directly in front of Ilulisat. Another highlight is a flight over the ice fjord and the glacier. The pilot will fly low over the fjord and circle around the majestic icebergs, which can reach a height of 3,000 feet and a few miles in length. If your guests are lucky, they may even spot whales from above. Next harbor is Umanak. It's considered one of the most beautiful towns in Greenland. Located on a small island about 300 miles north of the Arctic Circle, this tiny village lies at the foot of a heart-shaped mountain, as you can see in the picture. In Numanak, the local museum and the church will open its gates for all guests. The small settlement of Kekatasuak is our last stop on this Greenland cruise. Located on the th south coast of Disco Island, hunting and fishing are still the primary occupations for the island's inhabitants. One highlight is a hike to the Valley of the Winds. It's located right outside the settlement. The valley impresses with its waterfalls and large scenic variety with diversified flora and fauna. Guests will learn more about tundra vegetation and adaptions of plants to Arctic climate on this botanic hike. 
The next morning, we reach Kangalusuak, our port of disembarkation. The surroundings are a paradise for both reindeer and musk oxen due to the relatively mild, stable and dry clim climate and the abundance of food. On a tundra safari, guests will observe musk oxen roaming freely in their natural habitat and enjoy the beautiful tundra landscape on the top of the mountain Black Ridge, which offers fantastic panoramic views of the valleys and rivers around Kangalusuak and even parts of the Greenland ice cap. Once again, I would like to wrap things up and remind you of the most important reasons why your guests should book with Iceland Pro Cruises. So the most important reason is, of course, that we are the only Icelandic company that offers cruises around Iceland. With us, guests will experience Iceland with real Icelanders. With only 200 guests, the Ocean Diamond is a relatively small ship which creates a homey feeling on board and allows us to cruise off the beaten path and to dock at the pier where other ships have to anchor. So this gives our guests more time on land and more time to discover the nature. Our staff to guest ratio is at one to two and the atmosphere on board is very casual and guests can get easy in touch with our expedition team and tour guides. Our concept, the soft expedition is a cruise for everyone. Through booking the optional shore excursions, guests can shape their own cruise, either making it more adventure-like, like an expedition cruise, or more traditional cruise-like. We can even act as a DMC. We have our own office and staff in Iceland, and we can offer you or your guests all kind of extensions and extras. Here you can find my contact details in case you have any further questions or booking requests. So I would like you to thank you so much for listening and we are looking forward to welcoming you and your guests in Iceland or Greenland and on board the Ocean Diamond. Um, thanks so much for joining us. I hope that you learned a little bit um, today about the exciting excursions aboard the Ocean Diamond. Um, unfortunately, Enrique wasn't uh, able to join us live, so I just want to answer a few questions that came through. And I have my colleague Jenna on the line here who was um, managing that questions inbox. Uh, before I have her ask just a few questions, I wanted to let you guys know, um, you may be a little bit confused on how to pronounce um, the Iceland Pro Cruises ports in both Iceland or Greenland. Um, I'm actually working on a blog right now that um, I've had one of my Icelandic colleagues pronounce the correct uh, pronunciation of each of the ports, so you'll be getting that um, with this follow-up. So if you would like to learn and practice your Icelandic, expect that um, blog in the, in the follow-up email. So uh, Jenna, hit me. What, what kind of questions came through? All right. Thank you, Jesse. We do have a few questions coming through right now. Um, the first one we have is, is there an additional cost for the helicopter tours? Yes. Um, so if you... Um, she, she breezed over it quite quickly, Enrique mentioned in the beginning. The only excursions that are included in the cost of the um, tour are our Zodiac excursions. So anything done from our ship with our team, those are all included. Um, and we do about three to five of them per departure. But what we've done is we've partnered with local operators in each port in order to support them. So things such as um, a bus tour, a helicopter ride, um, a snowcat adventure, stuff like that, that is all additional and I can include the pricing in our follow-up. Perfect. So what would the average cost of the excursions be? Great question. Um, so they actually range. For example, we have a really great tour in East of Fjordur that um, we go into the Herring Museum that Enrique mentioned. So something like that can be as little as 20 to $50 per person. Um, if you're looking for the, the larger, longer adventures, uh, for example, you know, our full day excursions where we include, um, you know, a snowcat, maybe a bus tour to a lava field or a waterfall, those can get quite pricey. I believe the most expensive um, uh, excursion that we have is about five or six hundred dollars per person. 
but keep in mind that includes, you know, the, the snowcat journey and meals and, and several other items. So again, I will send you a price list of all of the excursions that were mentioned in this webinar. Perfect. All right. So to move away from the excursions and to talk a bit about the food, can you elaborate on the cuisine that is available on board? Sure. Um, so breakfast and lunch are a buffet style. And then for dinner, there is a, um, uh, I think we have five different options and it's a three course meal um, served. And um, it's a one seating and it's open seating. So um, you're welcome to dine whenever you'd like. It's a mix of local Icelandic food, which I really love. Um, Iceland, Iceland is um, very heavy on the fish or the lamb. Um, so we'll definitely offer something local every day. But then of course we have to please many different palates. So there is a variety of different uh, vegetarian or um, other meat options. And then of course we can cater to any dietary restrictions whether it's gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, vegan, um, diabetic, it doesn't matter. We can definitely cater to all of them on board. Awesome. And another question here for you, Jesse. Where is the staff from? So the guides on board are all Icelandic um, or Greenlandic. And then there is one guide, I believe he's from Germany, but has spent most of his life um, in Iceland. So all of our guides on board um, the ones that you'll be interacting with the most are all native Icelandic, Greenlandic, or our one um, outlier, our, our German guide. Um, the As for the staff, like in, in the kitchen or the, um, like the room attendants and stuff, they are all from the Philippines. Um, and they travel around with the boat. So we actually don't own the boat. Um, so the ship sails year round and we only have it during Iceland summer. So the staff kind of um, goes where the, where the boat goes. So Icelandic, all in Iceland and Greenland. So for us. Awesome. And this is kind of a difficult question, but do you have an idea of the main nationalities on board in regards to clients? Sure. So our number one market is definitely the United States. Um, especially for all of our Iceland departures. So Enrique mentioned the Iceland circumnavigation and the best of Iceland, as well as our Northern Lights and Wales. Um, our Greenland departures tend to be a little more heavier on the European attendance, especially German. Um, those cruises are much longer, so they're 12 days um, and you know require a pre or post so they can get quite long. But our, our main market and main um, clientele on board are from the US, um, mostly from the US, and then I'd say, um, gee, 60 to 70% from the US, and then the rest um, kind of scattered, but predominantly European. Wonderful, and another question, are gratuities included? And if not, what would be the standard pricing for those? Sure. Um, so gratuities are not included. So included in the um, tour package, again, I can send all this for you, is of course your accommodation in the booked category, um, an Iceland Pro Cruises jacket, all of your meals on board, um, coffee, tea, and water, um, and then those Zodiac excursions that we mentioned. So everything else is not included. And for gratuities, we I try and make it really easy and in each of our cabins when you when you jump on board it'll actually at the beginning of the cruise let you know um, you know what the recommended uh, gratuities are so it's about 10 to 15 10 to 15 dollars per person per day um, keep in mind that all goes directly to all the staff and then I always say if you're you know if you felt really moved or if you felt that a guide did really really well um, you know, at a certain particular uh, excursion or lecture, you are more than welcome. We have envelopes in the cabin for you to dedicate those to anyone specifically. All right. And when can you see the Northern Lights in Iceland? Um, another great question. Um, so the Northern Lights in Iceland will start peaking out at the end of August, believe it or not. We'll have our first sightings, but the more of the season is from, um, October into March-ish um, is a great time to see them. In 
in regards to the crews, our September departures would be the best time to see the Northern Lights. But um, of course, we don't sail during Iceland's winter. So if you really have a Northern Lights um, enthusiast and really want to guarantee, uh, or we don't guarantee any sightings, but really, really want a good chance of seeing the Northern Lights, winter time is the best. So, you know, November, December, January, February, but do keep in mind it's Iceland's winter. Um, so the weather can be quite harsh. You might catch some snow, but it is very enjoyable. But um, pertaining to the cruise, our September departures, you have a really great uh, opportunity to see the Northern Lights. All right. And are there conferences or lectures on board before reaching each port? Yes, of course. That's a really great question. So each night, um, there'll be a meeting in our lecture uh, room where we kind of go over the day. Uh, what we saw, maybe um, highlights, stuff like that. But then we'll also go into, um, you know, where we're where we're sailing to next. So, for example, if we're sailing into Husavik and Akureyri in the north of Iceland, those are some of the most whale-rich waters um, in Europe. So we would definitely highlight. Um, you know the several different whale species of the area where there are tons of lectures on on board um and I, and I highly highly recommend them they're all done by our guides who each specialize in different um topics so most certainly we do have lectures every single day all right and one last question for you here um when is the best time to see the puffins Oh, what a great question. I have, I have a funny story. I was there in September, in Iceland in September, and I did not even see a feather. They definitely migrate quite quickly. Um, so the best time to see puffins would be about May, uh, June, and July. Um, and then they um, will start to head out around mid-August-ish. Um, and they get the heck out of there. So again, when I was in September, I didn't see a, any sign of any puffin life, but I know they're definitely there. Um, but May, June, and July are the height of this season. Um, so that's a great, great question. Yeah, I didn't get to see them either when I was there, Jesse. I was there in September too. So I guess we'll just they have to leave. go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, I'd love to. They're they're so cute. All the Iceland, the locals find them very annoying, but of course for us uh, non-natives, we find them cute um, and intriguing, but I know that the locals find them a nuisance, but. <laughs> That's funny perspective, hey? All yeah. right, well, I'll let you take over from there, Jesse. Thanks for having me and have a good no, afternoon, thanks. everyone. <laughs> Uh, thanks for, for joining us, everyone. Hope you enjoyed um, learning about the cool excursions that we have on board. Um, I know that we are all in, um, you know, kind of post, not even post-COVID yet, but just thinking about where to send our guests as uh, uh, inquiries are trickling into our inbox. So I hope that you'll consider Iceland or Greenland aboard the Ocean Diamond in 2021. Uh, again, if you have any questions for me, please um, type those through, or sorry, uh, just email me back. I'm going to be sending the follow-up. But um, thanks so much for joining us, and I hope to have you on a future webinar.